you're pretty much auto addict out from bumper to bumper, so it is so cool. <laughs> yeah, this is so dope, honestly. This is your car. What's going on guys? I hope you guys are having a good day today. Just wanted to say thank you so much for the awesome feedback on our first style product that we launched on Asus Green Enostec uh, Camaro SS1 LE. Now, I have a lot of Camaros right behind me. Can you guys guess which Camaro that we're gonna be doing the second style project on in our new facility? Well, this one is on hold for a little bit. This one definitely got a cool style project but it's not due just yet. This is David's car right now, so he's not wrapping it. And we're gonna go and show you guys this awesome 2010 Chevy Camaro where we're gonna be doing Daniela's full-on style project from front bumper to Enostex film, headlights, fog lights, everything. Let's go ahead and get started and get all the details. Wrapping a vehicle such as 2010 Chevy Camaro, it's very crucial to ask questions such as how's the paint condition doing? How well do you maintain your car? How's the clear coat on this vehicle? Daniela maintains her car really, really good to where it looks almost brand new. She has the wear and tear, the swirls and all that good stuff, but with adding our uh, Enostex film on there, it's gonna cover all those imperfections and make this car look like brand new. I'm super excited to show you guys the process. The first thing, she already gave it to us washed, but we always have to wash the cars before we get them into our studio. So we make sure everything's cleaned out from the windshield to the trims, to the molding, to get all the contaminants and the dust out of the way. And after that, we start parting out the cars. Alright guys, so it's very critical and very important that the pre-prep process when it comes to wrapping a full car is done the right way and taking every precaution step possible that's needed to get it done and ready for our installers to go ahead and lay the film.
most important thing is parting out the vehicle. Our customer got the full package where we're parting out pretty much everything that's required to be parted out to wrap. The only thing that we're not wrapping is this front hood because remember, this is getting a full style product, not just a full wrap. A lot of our clients, when they wrap their cars, they take advantage of adding carbon fiber parts, conversion bumper, headlight, tail lights, other parts to make sure that it's fully equipped and they're taking advantage of not getting charged double the labor. Since we're already charging them for labor to remove everything, might as well add on a hood or something that's required within the workflow of this project. Now, the cool thing is the front bumper was fully parted out and uh, we're gonna add the conversion uh, ZL11LE conversion bumper with some inserts and highlighted in satin or gloss. We'll come up with the theme very soon. Uh, we took out the door handles on the mirrors and also the trim on top of the door to make sure our wrap installers are tucking in all the way on top to make sure the film is steady and sticks really well. Now, moving over to the back, everything has to be removed from the antenna to the rear bumper and uh, the trunk does not have any spoilers, so uh, she's definitely gonna take advantage of that and she might be adding a high Z011LE carbon fiber spoiler that we make for the 10 to 13 guys. And lastly, once we remove everything in the back, we're able to tuck in and do the quarter panels on both sides. video that I want to go over with you guys and regarding headlight conversion kits for all of our 2010 to 2013 Chevy Camaro this is specifically just for them because the 1415 owners don't have to do what we have to offer for the 10 to 13 we get a lot of questions and emails DMs inquiries comments on YouTube all over our social media platforms what is it that it means to get this new headlight to work on my 10 to 13 Camaro whether you have an LS LT SS a SS1 LE or a Z28 or potentially uh, a Z01. I take that away. Z28 wasn't produced till the 1415, so there isn't a 10 to 13 Z28. But long story short, the headlight molding of a 10 to 13 versus a 1415 is a lot smaller than the 1415. I have a perfect example on these two bills that we're wrapping and styling for our clients. Let's go over all the details, and I'm super excited to show you what we got going on for you guys. All right, guys, this is Daniela's build right here, and we're styling it for her as we speak. But this is a great video since we have her car to show you guys the 10 and 13 headlight. As you can see, the 10 and 13 headlight is a bit smaller mold than a 1415. And how can you tell? You can easily point out a couple things. Now, you can see a nice half a circle right here uh, separating the turn signals with the high and low beam. This is a non RS uh, headlight, meaning it's strictly halogen. It does not come with the projector. Let me show you what an RS headlight looks like so you guys know the difference of what harnesses we provide in order to put the 6th gen headlight without any problems. This is a great example. This is a 1415 headlight. It's a bit different than Daniela's. This is Juan's 
uh, Gen 5 camera that we're also wrapping as well. But the difference is he has the RS package lighting. The RS package lighting contains three things. You got both parentheses uh, Halo DRLs with the projector bulb. This means that he has the RS package lighting. Some people get the SS with the RS package lighting. Some people get it with the, the RS V6 with the RS package lighting. So we carry two style harnesses for you guys that equipped with the six gen headlight. With person we would ask, do you have the non-RS headlights or do you have the RS headlights? If you don't know as well, even though we went over these details, we can go beyond and have a sales rep uh, contact you direct to get a photo of your headlight plug and we'll be able as well to help you out on that. This is the six gen headlight that everybody loves to do on their fifth gen Camaro to convert it, make it more aggressive, a lot brighter, LED lights, and a more important, the amber sequential signals that you'll get up front. Now, a lot of mistakes get made on this and we get a lot of customers contacting us saying, hey, I bought a 2017 six gen OEM headlight. How can I put it on my 10 and 13 Camaro or 1415 with buying Auto Addicts USA conversion bumper? Well, that is already a big no-no. You don't do that. It will not fit. These are very look-alike of the Gen 6, so it's replicated really well, but they're meant to fit a Gen 5. If you're a 14, 15 owner, plug and play, good to go without any issues. But this video is gonna be going consider focus on the 10 and 13 owners because they need a custom harness to make sure these headlight function just like OEM without adding any adaption, any switches, any harnesses up in the dash, everything should be good, good to go. That T-harness is no way to get around it for the 10 and 13 owner, unfortunately, but we got your guys' back. Let's go over all the details and go at it from there. This right here is the non-RS T-harness that will function your 2010 and 13 headlight to the aftermarket Gen 6 style headlights. This harness will make your life a lot easier. Everything is plug and play and all you have to do is just plug in the plugs and put in to the fuse box number 16 and everything will be given to you guys as a PDF file to make sure you know how to install this harness. You might find this video helpful, but we'll go the extra mile and make sure you guys get a full on PDF file going over how to install what to plug in in this harness to fit the aftermarket headlights and to fit the OEM plug. Without further ado though, let's go ahead and start taking off these headlights to show you guys behind the scene ends of what plugs into what to make sure everything is functional. 100%. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and take off the headlights. We're going to do a full removal on both sides, connect the harness and then connect the bulb for the headlight. Please note, the 6 gen headlights don't come with light bulbs. Uh, from the factory, so therefore we do sell a D2S option on our website to select, or you can get your local one, but a lot of people trust us with getting the D2S that we have. It fits perfectly fine, super bright, it's LED, and it has a fan to cool down the LED when it's fully functional. It's gonna get started. Ten and thirteen OEM headlights, fourteen, fifteen, six gen style headlights for the ten to fifteen Camaro Fitme. But you see, different. This is a lot smaller than this one, and it's a whole different Fitme. But it will fit. In order to fit this, please don't get it confused. You cannot put these headlights with your OEM bumper. You have to get an OEM fourteen, fifteen uh, bumper, or you can get Auto Addicts USA conversion ZL1 bumper to fit these headlights. So if you're thinking about swapping these OEM headlights to get a ZL1 uh, 6 gen headlight replica right on the dock, you have to do the bumper exchange 100%. But if you don't wanna change out the headlights and keep your 10 to 13 OEM headlights and get Auto Addicts USA conversion bumper, it'll fit totally fine, but you'll have a gap right on the top corner of each style headlight. <laughs> Alright guys, as you can see the OEM harness right here, it's equipped with a halogen bulb 
which is a big no-no in this uh, day and age. Everything's all bright, LED, crystal white. So we're gonna be removing the harness uh, for Daniela's car right here, and we're gonna equip everything with LED that will fit our T harness to make sure the headlight is fully functional. This is why another reason this T harness is must because of the plugs from the 14, 15 does not fit a 10 and 13. The sockets that's made from the factory is completely different. So what we do, we hand build the in-house T harness for you guys, and which is the T harness. You got two sockets, one for each side for the turn signals and then the other one for the 1415 headlight and the OEM socket versus all the relay and uh, the fuse box that needs to be connected so this is made by hand for you guys it takes about three to five business days to build before we ship it out but the demand are really happy with us right now so we are stocking them and pre-building them for our clients so we're able to ship the orders right away so we can be on top of things and not have any delays for you guys how to run this harness and what are the right ways to do it. My personal preference, since we've installed these a lot, I like to run it from on top of the radiator right here, underneath the radiator support. So if God forbid something does happen or there's a mistake or something doesn't go the right way, you guys don't have to remove the whole bumper again. Do the hassle, spend two to three hours removing that. You can just play around it with it over here just by popping your hood and uh, kind of making whatever you have to do. Um, of course, we warranty our work. If God forbid something happens, we're fully covered, no problem. But majority of the time, everything's functioning really good because we build a really good quality T harness in house with using proper OEM sockets to fit your plugs and the headlights, and really good resistor and relays to make sure the motherboards of the harness is functioning the right way, just like the OEM. And again, I forgot to mention, if you guys go right here and look. We will not be adding any switches at all. Everything will be working off this hand switch right here on the bottom to make sure your high beam, low beam, and all that good stuff. And turn signals is fully functional. So you will not be adding or running wires to add an external switch. That's a big, big no-no for us. We wanna make sure you, we're making you guys' life a lot easier. All right guys, so we already pre-measured this as well. So make sure everything is the perfect fitment and the length so you don't have nothing dangling or hanging loose from a, your uh, headlight socket from the backside so it doesn't hit the wheel weld or rips the harness. Now, as you can see, one connects by the fuse box and then the other one goes all the way to the passenger side right here. And these two sockets right here is one for the driver's side and the passenger side. It does not matter which one you use, they both function for both sides the same way. But let's go over some details to show you what you need to connect and how to connect these things to make it fully functional. So the turn signal is very important and crucial. So as you can see, for every socket that we make for you guys, the orange and blue rubber socket is going to be going to your OEM harness, right? Now, with that being said, we mark a black Sharpie line indicating which is the uh, negative ground versus the positive this is very very important guys and a crucial point because when we install this the wrong way or if you guys do so you guys will blow the fuse box uh, every single time and you have to keep replacing it replacing it replacing it not knowing why the fuse box or the fuses are blowing up on your vehicle um, it's not a big problem but it's for your protection because with a negative and an opposite charge touches with the metal circuits um, it creates a fuse uh, shortage and that's why that fuse blows so you got to make sure you line up ground with ground and positive with positive let's go over the details and show you guys what we mean so this is the pot this is the negative ground right here and I follow this line it's gonna be this socket line on the top and then I'll make sure I'll look over my colors on this harness I see black purple and blue black indicating that it's negative right here so that's a negative charge so I'll make sure I'll connect it right away right here make sure I hear the click and I lock it in with the red socket of the T harness and then uh, this will be going to your uh, new headlights that I'll be showing you guys soon so this is how to install the turn signal socket without blowing up your fuses or making any short all right guys whatever we did on the, the driver's side we're gonna duplicate and do on the passenger side this will be the same exact thing I'm gonna relocate my ground line I'm gonna follow the line it's gonna be this socket head right here I'm gonna look at the OEM harness I see a black white and brown and a white and blue the brown I mean sorry the black will indicate my ground I'll go ahead and uh, plug it in I hear the click I lock it with the socket I'm secured the harness is not going anywhere all right guys when you guys get the the headlights the 6 gen and you have a 10 and 13 the OEM packaging uh, box uh, comes with an external uh, harness Please, I repeat, please do not use this harness. Every time you use it with our T harness, if you're a 10 and 13 owner, you will blow a fuse. Let me show you guys why these don't work because this is an aftermarket headlight harness for the 1415 and this is built to function your OEM functionality for the 10 and 13. So when we put the pins with this one, which will work, 
but it's gonna be a circuit that's not gonna get the whole connection. It's gonna throw an opposite charge, blowing up your fuses every single time. So if you're a 10 and 13 owner and you did purchase the 14, 15 listing uh, website uh, headlight, just throw those away or put them on the side. But if you're a 14, 15 owner, that is meant for you, okay? So running the wire for the headlight plug is very crucial. So what I like to do right now, kind of set my wires all around on top of the engine bay. And then after that, I, I kind of run it behind the wiper line right here, fluid. I bring it from the bottom, kind of hide it in a good place. And then after that, just make sure the wires are not interacting or interfering with anything that's around it to make sure it clears. So with any movement, it doesn't rip anything or does any damage. After that, we go down to the bottom. There's two sockets, guys. This will be for the aftermarket headlight, and this will be for your OEM plug that we transfer a T-harness from OEM to 1415. 10 to 13 OEM to 1415. Same, same exact thing. So we kinda uh, put everything ready to go, so when you hear a click, you hear that, you lock it with the red pin, and you're good to go. It's not going anywhere. And that's what we do to bypass the 10 to 13 plug into the 1415 to make sure these headlights fit without any problem. Now, the passenger side, there's more work to it. As you know, uh, this is where all the juicy and uh, technical stuff goes in here. Uh, but the fuse box number, you'll do that last till everything's connected. So there's gonna be a two set of plugs. One set of plug is for your fog light to make sure it functions, and the second one is for the headlight. So we're gonna do the same replicated way that we did for the driver's side. Run the wires underneath, make sure it doesn't interfere with any wires, so we should be good to go. Set it loose temporary for right now till you connect your uh, plugs. And it's okay if this is angling because there's no power and the whole key is off the car. And then now, as you can see guys, we took care of the turn signals that we went over earlier. Now we have two plugs to take care of. This will be the aftermarket headlight. This is for your fog lights and uh, to make sure your fog lights are fully functioning. Now we plug this in here. You hear a click. There's no lock in here because the car didn't come with it. And then this will connect to the OEM harness that comes off of the bumper. Now the second socket, same exact thing for the headlight. You hear a click. It does come with the red pin to close it. You push it in and now your T-harness is fully functional with the turn signals, the headlights, and the parking lights on the fog lights. Everything's all connected before I even plug in the fuse box. Let's take a little break from the T-harness, move over to the headlight. Remember guys, the, the headlights don't come with light bulbs at all, so I gotta make sure I open up the socket and show you guys the trick of how to install our D2S bulbs so you guys are fully aware of what's going on. All right guys, so as you can see, the headlight is ready here. This is for the turn signal socket, which I'll go over at the last when we plug in the headlight. This, what I like to do, open up the socket from the back. The first thing that I like to do before we install the, the, the bowl, I like to switch out this garment rubber to make sure it's pointing the opposite way so the fan is not being touched by this to interact with the bowl. Okay, so as you can see, I, I reversed the garment pointing outside so it's not interfering with any fitment issues over here. Uh, it's just, it's a better secure way to also to let the moisture not go in, so I like to do that. Now the first thing is, as you can see, there's a black and a green wire which indicates negative and positive. This will put on the side. We gotta take out the green socket by reverse uh, engineering how they uh, twist it to install. I take out the bracket and let's show you guys the bulbs. Okay, so a D2S bulb looks like this, guys. We're also upgrading our bulbs as we get to know these headlights more and more. We used to have a, a little red connector that connects into this, but now we're cutting everything away to make sure everything is plug and play. So before I even put this, I just wanted to show you guys to make sure you indicate the positive and negative, and then the positive and negative will be connected on here. So you got the green is positive and the black is negative, so you'll switch that to make sure my colors are fully good to go and then I'll double check. So this is now connected, ready to function. It's that easy, guys. The only hard part that you just kinda kinda play with is installing the socket on here and uh, making it nice and firm without having anything loose. So I open up the socket, I plug it in. The D2S, I make sure I line it up the right way right here, should be good to go. And then after that, I plug it into the vehicle and I twist to secure and lock the socket. So as you can see right here, I twist to lock and then it's not going anywhere at all. I got everything connected. So there's so much gray area space for you guys right here. You can just kind of tuck in the wire inside with the ballast. And then once that's all tucked in, just gotta angle it in a way. You'll be good to go. 
There we go. Now, now you guys see why I, switch, like, why I switched the garment upside down because look, there is the fan will pop up a little bit, but it's not gonna have any fitment issues. But when I close it, it plugs in, good to go, lines up with the legs. I twist, good to go guys, like nothing happened. Headlight is ready to go. Let's go ahead and show you guys the install. All right guys, so the first thing that I wanna do, which is the first mistake that a lot of our clients do is the turn signal harness. Again, let's go back to the red, uh, black Sharpie that marked line that we marked here, indicating that this is our negative line, which is ground. We gotta look at the aftermarket headlight and there is a white, black, yellow, black. So the two black lines are connected together. That's the side that's gonna go up, as you can see. The black line right here, it's gonna go in there, lines up with our Sharpie line that we marked for you guys. If you do the opposite, which is a lot of mistake does happen if you guys wanna get closer here to see, the yellow lines up with the black, and when you turn on the car and turn on the switch, it fuses automatically gonna short and pop, and you have to replace it every single time. So the key to installing this socket is you install it really good, and you might think it's in there, but it's actually not. So you actually gotta be very firm and push it with very good pressure. So ready, go. It's in there, but I still have to do another uh, round of pressure to make sure just it's sit nice and comfortable in there. Kind of put my hand over it and I give it a last push and this is good to go. It's not going anywhere. And the cool thing about the socket that we make for you guys in-house will fit perfectly fine. Twist it, get to go, bypass the 10 or 13 into the 14, 15 turn signal, and we're gonna show you guys the results very soon. All right, for the headlights, guys, we're not adding any external harnesses to this. Remember, we're not gonna do anything. Whatever that we give you guys need to go in there, but this is another firm one too, so when it goes in, you guys are gonna think that it's in there, but it's not. It will also pop a fuse, so you gotta kinda hold the headlight in a very good position and clip it in there. You hear that clip? The second you hear that clip, it's good to go without any issues, and you got yourself a full-on T-harness conversion with the headlight conversion ready to go to function on your 10 and 13 Camaro. So the last step after installing everything is the fuse box right here. Now, a lot of you guys' fuse box comes with the fuse box uh, clipper or popper. So you need to go into number 16 right here. Get your uh, clipper in there, take it out. It's gonna be a five amp fuse. But what you guys see right here is we built another socket to fit both of them together. Plug them both together, make sure they're nice and firm. All that good stuff will be good to go. And then lastly, you go back to socket number 16, you plug it inside, and you're good to go. You just kind of close this right here, we'll be good. And then your harness is fully functional. Let's go ahead and test out the functionality and show you guys if everything's working good or not. And of course, uh, Danielle is going to be getting the conversion bumper, but let's go over the details. Why is it way better to do these conversion headlights for the T harness for the 10 to 13 owners? But what's the benefit of having these awesome headlights? What I love about these headlights, the projector helps even make the, the LED bulbs a lot brighter, projecting the leveled surface. The headlights are adjustable to the level if you want it higher or lower or in the midsection, but we leveled everything for our customer to make sure everything is being viewed the right way, projecting both.
both driver and passenger side. It's a lot safer, brighter, new one, new headlight, and you get an aggressive look. These are a must, guys. And the last option is, let's go ahead and show you the DRLs. My favorite part about these headlights guys is the daytime running lights on the bottom, a crisp crystal white LED bar replicating the Gen 6 DRLs, my favorite. It changes the whole game of your vehicle, especially for the older Gen 5 owners. It gives a bright crystal all around, uh, making it bright and aggressive to match in the D2S bulbs that we sell with our listing. Now there's an RGB feature if you guys want to make this color changing, add a halo, do all the bells and whistles with it. We'll be more than happy to help you guys out with that. But this is our starter kit without it being RGB. But my favorite go-to look, as you see, everything's functioning right. The harness was installed the correct way. The fuse block was inserted to slot number 16 without making any shorts. This means we did everything correct and all the sockets are integrated. Thank you, Danielle, for giving us the opportunity. We're super excited. I can't wait to show her the reveal for this awesome car. But this is how to convert your 10 to 13 OEM headlights to the 6th gen style headlights with adding auto addicts in-house team harness. I hope you guys liked this video and you found this video very informative and helpful. If you guys have any questions, please don't forget you can email us at salesautoaddictusa.com. Contact our sales team on Instagram by contacting us via DM or give us a call on our website. I'm super thankful and thank you guys for your opportunity and I can't wait to show you guys and supply you with all these awesome products that we offer for your Gen 5. All right guys, I don't even know where to start in this car. Our client, Daniela, went beyond and above and challenged us to make her vision happen on her build. We fully wrapped it, we added wheels, tires, custom carbon fiber wheel that we're gonna be announcing for all our 10 to 13 and 14, 15 owners and our front bumper conversion. There's one thing missing as you guys see is the hood. One final carbon fiber product that's gonna be installed on this vehicle to make sure it gives the aggressive look that it deserves. What style is it? Can you guys guess in the comments before we show you? I can't wait to show you guys what we got going on over here. All right guys, so, um, after we finished, it's kind of funny how it worked out with Daniela here. After we finished the entire wrap project here and we did all the bumper, the carbon fiber and everything, I was looking at the car and I suggested her to upgrade the wheels to a different style, right? Nothing wrong with the old ones that she had, but it was just a smaller uh, fitment on everything that she had going on with being so aggressive. So uh, I told her, Let's go ahead and upgrade the wheels. She gave me the green light. We powder coated the wheels from satin to gloss black and we gave her a flush fitment. Let's go over the fitment on these front and rears and show her the details on her new replicas Z01 1LE style. Check out her fitment right there guys. As you can see the front is very very crucial for me and it makes sure it clears the customer gets a, a flush fitment and a good quality tire. Now, we went with the Toyos up front with the Z01 1LE Gen 6 replica. Why did we go with this style? To replicate and match the look that she was going with on the front and the back. Let's go ahead and go over the Z01 1LE replica wheels. These are made by our partners at MRR and we love giving a flush fitment in 20 by 10 in the front and 20 by 11. Uh, we got our customer a 305 in the back and 285 in the front, giving everything a lined up flush fitment with the fenders and the quarter panels on the back. Now, I know this could be a, a little bit of a bigger gap, but at the moment, she's gonna rock it with the stock suspension till we could potentially do springs or coilovers or bags. This is upon her preference. Since we did such a big project for her, she's gonna think about which route on suspension she wants to go with to make sure she's getting the right suspension. These are also powder coated gloss black. They're originally satin black from the factory of MRR, but we, we all do offer full on powder coating services for you guys. And we wanted it to match with the arrow of the front lip and the spoiler being glossy. We were able to go ahead and offer the 10 to 13 guys now a Z11 LE carbon fiber spoiler to be installed. The cool thing about it with a lot of people ask us questions, would I have exposed holes? Would I have anything? No, she got a got lucky when she purchased the car there was no holes or no spoiler at all so we were able to custom drill custom holes to make sure it fits the right way with flush fitment now if you're going to be taking out your old spoiler and you install this our spoiler will fit 100 but you might have exposed holes in between these legs right here just because of the oem existing spoiler that you had rocking on your camaro all right, let's go over the front bumper. This is probably our hottest bumper that we sell in the market as in today. Our Z01 1LE nine-piece kit. Our nine-piece kit is equipped with the upper grille, lower grille, lower front lip, 
the bezels and the dive planes. Now, as you can see, she's also rocking the headlights Gen 6 style. In order to rock these headlights, you need a custom T-harness uh, to make sure the low beam, high beam turn signals and the daytime running is fully functional. Let's go ahead and turn on the fog light and show you guys the complete look and the aggressive look that she wanted to accomplish on this car. All right, guys, check out this front aggressive look, which is the most go-to look that's very popular in the Gen 5 community. The DRLs and the Gen 6 headlights with the fog light giving this car a very mean, aggressive look. As you guys know, our dive planes with a Gen 5 bumper will be able to be equipped with the DRLs, but if you're getting a Gen 6, it's a full-on fog light delete, and uh, you'll be, you won't be able to rock the fog light. So the Gen 5 guys, you guys are very lucky to make sure you guys are having this look on your vehicle. Without further ado though, to make this more aggressive, we also painted it gloss black inserts to make sure it matches the theme of the color. We're super excited, I can't wait this theme right here with the final finish to add right now is going to be a killer. Let's go ahead and make this Camaro more aggressive and show you the final results. <laughs> that is crazy crazy right it's a whole different car you got the one le nine piece kit i gave you a cool little eyebrow action just making her look mean in a way with the gloss black inserts lower grille upper grille the front lip the carbon hood just sells everything honestly with the scoop and the vents on the side being all nice and bright the way it's supposed to this is your car honestly check out the wheels gloss black powder coated Perfect fitment as well with the perfect height, 285 in the front, 305s on the back. Contrasting it with satin mirrors, satin handles, so it can match the theme. So it would be good to go. Got going on a lot of gloss, bright yellow and gloss black as well, so it's just super sweet. Going over to the back, check out this high spoiler that just sits perfect on your trunk, honestly, so which is really, really cool. Um, contrasting this, we did these in black right here for you. So we deleted the chrome, we wrapped the bow tie in black, and then obviously with the high wing being in carbon fiber and you're pretty much auto addict out from bumper to bumper so it is so cool <laughs> yeah this is so dope honestly this is your car people did not even know this was your car when they saw it when it was all gray so i know i know i think the wheels was definitely a must it changes the whole car so it gives you more of a visibility, better traction, and more sporty look as well. The front bumper is just those eyes in the car. You get me, and then you'll be good. Changes the whole thing, honestly. So it's just super, super nice. Definitely can't go wrong with it. Oh my gosh, thank you. I appreciate you. No, of course, of course. Yeah, this is all your your hard work, and you giving us the trust. It's a huge opportunity, honestly. So we'd be good to go. This is your car. I know. Do you like it, my friend? Oh, thank you. Of course. Likewise, likewise, thank you. I appreciate you, I appreciate you. Yeah, we put all our love into this. We've had it out all this time. Everyone that came in, I'm like, if you guys post this, keep it in black and white. I don't want them to see it at all. No, of course, I appreciate you. Honestly, that means. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Of course, this is all you trust. You gave us the opportunity. I think we're gonna start with like a TikTok uh, search, right? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah, and now with like a whole different style project. There's a big vision that I have for you on this. I'll slowly guide you, but enjoy this right now. Like legit enjoy it. Take it out, 
vibe out with it, take photos. I mean, you needed the right choice on that, so. I saw some down the road, and I was like, these cars got nothing. No, exactly, exactly, right? So. <laughs> no, of course, I appreciate you. This, this honestly means a lot to us. You know, you being part of the Auto Addicts family is a huge honor, and we're blessed to be working with you and hopefully many more and see what you got for us. This is so cool. He's <laughs> speechless, bro. That's insane. Yeah, I, I kind of want to keep it, but I'm like, this is the sad moment for us because, like, literally, it became part of us. You know, so much love and passion was went into this car, long hours, and you know, to part it out. This car was stripped down, and you'll see the videos when we doing a lot of the the pre work when we were filming it for you. But it's insane. This is this is your car, honestly. Sweet. He said he didn't like the color at first, but then now that he sees it in person. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she gave us the trust. She said, this is the right one. So. There you guys have it. The 2010 Camaro, best ever looking aggressive car that's coming out of our new facility. We appreciate our client for giving us a trust and opportunity. And for letting us do all this work means a lot. If you guys are interested, you want to get your car wrapped, styled by us, contact us on our email or social media. We'll be more than happy to help you out. Oh, moving forward, so. No, of course, of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, no, I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. That means a lot. Thank you so much for Daniela for giving us the opportunity not just to work on your vehicle, but for giving us the opportunity and trust to be part of this project reveal. I know a lot of her family members got a lot of Camaros, so she's throwing us to the challenge and her father as well because they are a Camaro family. So we can't wait to see what we got next. I'll see you guys soon.